Three mics, top of their types. A ribbon, a dynamic, and a condenser. I thought that that was the order that they were uh, invented, as it were. But when I went to have a look, I was wrong. Anyway, the ribbon mic, early 1920s, has a light metal ribbon suspended between the poles of a magnet. You can make your own if you look on YouTube. Some videos there. So you have a strip of aluminium, very light, very thin microns, and a, it, between the po it, uh, situated between the poles of a magnet. The ribbon vibrates, and that disturbance in the magnetic field induces a current in the ribbon. And then you take the wire from each end. Wonderfully simple. Very tiny output into a transformer to bump it up. And even then, your, the output's pretty low. Uh, it's actually, I think, called a velocity mic rather than a dynamic, even though the principles are fairly similar. And I couldn't quite find a good explanation of exactly what that difference is. Anyway, you can look if you like. Um, they, they have uh, inherent high frequency roll off but they say that it's similar to the way people hear if you look at human hearing the lows and the highs are rolled off so it seemed to match that quite well they were used a lot then we have the uh, dynamic mic which is the most common in terms of stage mics uh, that has a diaphragm the biodynamic M88 has a very light Hostafan diaphragm. There'll then be a former on the back, which is a bit like if you took a inside of a cardboard roll and cut a sliver, stuck that on there, and then wound wire around the edge of that, holds the wire in place on the back of the diaphragm, and then a magnet that the wire moves over, and that induces a current. Then you tap off the wire into a transformer, and off you go. 1931, a dynamic mic. The capacitor, condenser, or apparently properly called a capacitor microphone, but everybody calls them condensers now, so that's the end of that, was 1916, which surprised me. If what I'm reading is reliable, of course. Who knows? And this has two electrically charged plates. One of them is fixed, and then there's a front one, but they're just electrically charged plates. And the sound waves, of course, causes that one to vibrate and the change in the distance causes a variation in the electric charge between the plates. So, all well and good. Um, you want to hear what they sound like and see if the construction really is of any use to us in terms of using the things on stage. I've chosen three mics all of which I thought were current, but when I went to do a little bit of research, I discovered that one of them isn't. So, the biodynamic V90R, top of its type, well, it's the only one of its type. And in fact, now, it's not even that, because when I went to look for the price, everybody said discontinued. Anyway, the last price I found, well, in a review price, which was in 2016, Sound on Sound magazine, it said 333. So top of its type, only one of its type. The Sennheiser MD431 Mark II. It's about 355 pounds. It's obviously a very good dynamic mic. If you're going by price alone, it's got to be up there and there's not many dynamics. There are some others, but it's pretty high up on the list in terms of cost. And it is a good mic. I was tempted to use a biodynamic M88, but I've used that a lot recently for things. I thought you'd like a rest from it. And also there's already a biodynamic mic in there, even though I'm not comparing the mics themselves, just the uh, construction, the type of mic. And then, of course, I'm going to go to the top of the condenser or capacitor tree. That's the Earthworks SR40V. I'm going to put something on screen. It's handwritten, and I apologise for the bleed through from the other side of the paper, but I thought uh, we may as well save paper, mightn't we? I don't like throwing things away unnecessarily. So, 
If you see that, what we're looking for then in a ribbon or velocity microphone is that it will be fast because that light diaphragm, light material, metal, natural sounding. They're obviously a simple construction. And I've put pure in that I like the fact that the very thing that vibrates, uh, the current is induced in that itself. Very simple, isn't it? Low output, fragile. I've got many M500, which was the predecessor to the V90R, that are decades old and they're working fine. Um, they, yeah, I think the, the Bale ones, the ones that are designed for stage, don't seem to be fragile. People used to worry about blowing on them. If you blew on them, you'd blast the ribbon to pieces because uh, the ribbon, you can just crumble it in your fingers if you touch the aluminium. But the Bayer seems to have effective shielding against pops and blasts, and there they are. They're still working. So I've got no uh, evidence for that. The dynamic mic are known to be tough. Probably are tougher than the ribbon and the condenser, I'd have thought. Um, and inexpensive and, you know, all over the place, aren't they? but tend to be a bit slow, muddy, and the frequency tends to be limited. The condenser or capacitor mic, they're fast, have a good frequency response. They require phantom power. These days, I don't think they're delicate or they can be made so they're not delicate. Uh, they say they don't like moisture and they tend to be expensive, though these days we're seeing uh, slightly uh, cheaper ones coming out. One more thing about the way they work then. As you know about the, the ribbon, it's very light, so that's why it's fast. Don't know why it doesn't go super high, but it goes high enough. As well, we'll hear. Uh, you could imagine then that with the dynamic, even if you've got a very light uh, diaphragm, you've still got to have the voice coils glued onto the back of it. I assume it's glued. And then you've got to have the coils of wire. And I, must, I imagine the more coils of wire you have, the more output you get but the heavier the whole thing becomes. So that's the issue with the dynamic, is keeping things light. And if you make it really, really light, then maybe you're heading towards it being fragile. So that's probably why the dynamics are quite tough, but a little bit muddy sounding, because this thing takes a while to get up to speed, and when it gets really fast, it just can't handle it. The capacitor mics then, because they haven't got all that gubbings either, like the ribbon, the diaphragms can be very light. And on the earthworks, it's very light, and very small, which makes it even lighter. So that's uh, my explanation anyway about that. So I'm comparing the types then. What am I going to do? I think I'm just going to go through them and go through what they're supposed to sound like and see if they do and if, if there's any use, if there's anything to them, really, or do we all just stick with dynamics? Obviously not. But uh, let's see if we can hear. So hopefully I've balanced them all up. My desk is now in fine working order because the trim pots, if you see my previous video, trim pots were getting ridiculous in trying to set. So I've given them a good uh, 100 sweeps. Seems to be fine. So there we go, I'm pleased with that. I'm on the 33, as you can uh, see. I'm just gonna go through and see what we get. So uh, going on to the Biodynamic V90R ribbon microphone. This is a biodynamic V90R ribbon microphone. The first thing I noticed is when I said this. Now, two things biodynamic managed to do with this ribbon mic. Ribbons are naturally a uh, figure of eight, as you can imagine, because you've got the ribbon moving like that, and it doesn't matter which side you speak on. I'll do it this way for you, that side or that side. Great, it's going to pick up well. So they managed to make it cardioid I believe cardioid I believe yeah cardioid I believe cardioid I believe so the back we're interested in and it's pretty good rejection there ribbons are naturally at the side and naturally uh, don't respond because if the breath comes from your direction towards me it's not going to vibrate like that it's just going to sound as it's just going to go straight past so they managed to do that I don't know how and if you look at the frequency response chart there's quite a rise in the treble in fact it's very sweet because I think it's fast up there. So I, I, I do like them. I do, yeah, it's as I'm talking now. I get fed up with it after a while, but uh, it takes quite a while. But if I uh, maybe roll uh, just a little of the treble off, just a little of the treble off, just a little of the treble off, just a little of the treble off there, maybe that's more 
typically ribbon, which is still quite pleasing. I find it's up here, 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 that area, which I find, yeah, there's something about it. Here's to take the treble off even more. Treble's nearly all the way down. I think it's 12 kilohertz, my control. Here, here, here. Still kind of, uh, still kind of okay, really. Bringing the treble back in. There we are, back to flat. And if I boost the treble so you can hear what's going on, if I do the 12 kilohertz, you can hear getting a lot of that stuff there, stuff there. That gets, But it's still quite sweet, isn't it? Not really spiky. So uh, quite pleasing. Well, very pleasing, I find. I would say, yes, it's got a ribbon sound, as I know. Bring it in closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can handle that. That's nice. I have said, reviewed this one separately, and you have to be very careful. You can hear the proximity comes in quite suddenly. So it's not really a mic for holding up to your mouth. Right close. I think it's there's a good place. Place. If I bring it closer, you can hear just there we're starting to get it. And there it really kicks in. So you'd need to be a uh, quite uh, practiced with this one. So I think it does what they say, and it does more because it's got a slightly enhanced trouble, which you can get rid of if you don't like. And uh, what else did they say? Ah, uh, low output, yes. Yes, it's, it's certainly up, it's up right near the top. But on everything I've used it, for, used it on, it's usable, but it's going to be right up the top in terms of the, uh, the gain, the trim pot. Let's move on to a, a dynamic then. Here we are with the dynamic. Here we are with the dynamic. What do I notice immediately? I notice, I notice that up there is verging on it's okay it's okay of course that real top end boost isn't there real top end t -t -t -t. and to me it's not as clear at the top what about bringing it in a bit here it's very it's quite smooth as that actually bring it in closer here yeah 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 it's okay this one does have a wizardry capacitor or something inside to reduce the very low end uh, but it's not bad is it it's okay oh no, i'd be happy with it what do I notice? I think what I notice generally, yeah, it's a little bit muddier. It's very pleasant. It's a little bit muddier. I just feel there's not the uh, the detail somehow. The detail somehow. T -t -t, that can be a bit spiky. The detail somehow. Not the detail somehow. T -t -t. I'll go through them with the breath later because I've found that's a good, I think, for the minute, a good test for resolution and speed. So nice enough there. Um, something about it, I don't know. Is, I, I wouldn't, I can't complain, but uh, I think just, 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 it's a little bit of, to me, muddiness somehow. It's not really muddy, but compared to that, then going on then to the capacitor. And this is the Earthworks SR40V. This is the Earth. <laughs> Yes, 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 yeah. Lord have mercy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just got everything, really, isn't it? This is the Earthworks. So what, are we look, what are we looking for? Fast. It feels like it's fast to me. I can hear all that. As soon as I picked it up and breathed in, I could hear that. Tss, tss, seems to me flat enough. The top's there. The top's there. Tss, tss, the top's there. Tss, tss, the top's there. Tss, the top's there tss, 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 tss. Seems to be detailed to me and not as accentuated perhaps it seems to be more clarity when i when i say not as accentuated all that area there not as accentuated bottom end is prodigious which i like yeah keep it there but if i want a bit more eh, 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 eh. starting to get a bit there eh, eh, eh. oh lord now i've got to watch out eh, eh. but you know what well, even when i'm doing it there there's a bit of boom up, bit of boom up there from my voice. But even if I'm doing it there, I find that the rest of my voice I can hear. So it's like it underpins it, but all the, the speed and the clarity on the rest of it is still there. So that's wonderful. That's, that's exactly what I want. Um, the breathy parts in the speed bit, the speed bit. I found round about there is a... It's almost as if you can hear into the grain of uh, the air rushing and bouncing around somehow. That's a capacitor. I, I could be me. But I think I can hear a smoothing out. It's nice enough. It's like, uh, just made it a bit of syrup. Nice syrup. Light. Light syrup, not 
treacle. A bit of syrup over everything. It's just sort of... <sighs> I'm going to... Yeah. Dynamic. Dynamic. Capacitor. Dynamic. Not as much detail to my ears. Ribbon. Ribbon and dynamic. The ribbon, I've noticed, is a little bit noisy in here. I changed one light because it was buzzing. I've got another light, and I'm wondering if that's now having some... Yeah. Ribbon. Dynamic. Can't hear the detail so much on the dynamic. Ribbon versus the almighty. Ribbon. The ribbon. Capacitor. Seems to me that, well, I suppose not surprisingly, that the uh, SR40V, SR40V, not the SR40V, not the SR40V, take this up a bit, not the SR40V, not the SR40V, the SR40V, the SR40, okay, I'm going to stop now, because I'm getting carried away, and also, I'm not really comparing the mics, which... I've ended up doing a bit because uh, not all uh, capacitor mics, just got a bit of knitting going on here, um, have that, what's going on there. Well I, well, I did say top of their types, so that is a top capacitor mic. This is a top ribbon mic, was the only one. And this is pretty much a top dynamic. So I think, yeah, I hope that was worth doing. So I think they, uh, they demonstrate what people say, really, about them. My choice would be, if I only had one mic out of these three, would be the SR40V for sure. If I'm going to have two out of these, you've probably guessed, it would be the SR40V and the, the V90R. The Sennheiser's a fine mic, but once I've heard that detail, baby, I have a hard time letting go of it. So, but that's just me. Adios. <laughs>